great fighters. It's ironic Mike Tyson standing here not nearby. If he has any competition for the world's greatest fighter, it would be with Julio Cesar Chavez, who took his 61-0 record in this afternoon, Alex, against uh, Kenny Vice. And Kenny Vice, a, a journeyman fighter, but certainly uh, not championship caliber. But there still were some questions to be answered here this afternoon as, as Chavez fought heavier than he's ever fought before. That's exactly right. Three pounds heavier than he ever had. The, uh, the interesting thing about Julio Cesar Chavez was he is a, a three-time world champion. First one at 130 pounds, moved up and won two of the versions of the 135-pound lightweight title. Has compiled that record, an unbelievable record, the best record in boxing today, 61-0 with 50 knockouts. But in the last title that he won at 140 pounds, he beat Roger Mayweather, not just on the skills that had got him his earlier two titles, but really more in his determination and his will and his strength as a fighter. The skill did not seem to be there as much at 140 pounds. And I think that really was the interesting thing, Dan, as we came in here earlier today to look at the Chavez fight. Obviously, it was not a competitive fight. Kenny Vice, if there were odds, would be a 100 to 1 underdog. The question was, how would Chavez look? Would he show the skill that he'd been able to display earlier at the lighter weights? Chavez reminds me of a surgeon. I mean, he just, he, he looks like he knows precisely what he wants to do, what part of the body he wants to work on. He's, he's an amazing fighter. Very, very mature and interesting to watch all the time. All right, well, what we're going to do right now is we are going to take a look at Julio Cesar Chavez and Kenneth Weiss. Here's how Alex and I called the fight. We begin with round one. This welterweight bout is Good scheduled afternoon. for 10 rounds. It is a non-title affair. The New Here at the Atlantic City Convention Center between Julio Cesar Chavez and Kenny Vice. We talked to Julio yesterday and said, asked why he would take uh, a non-titled fight like this uh, against an opponent who's obviously a huge underdog. I mean, not even the odds on something like this. And he said, I have to keep busy. I and these fights, uh, my record is very important to me, and this fight can be a loss as, as well as one in which I'm defending my title. Well, a rare opportunity for fans on the East Coast to see in person Julio Cesar Chavez and, of course, on network television. Another rare opportunity, I believe only his second appearance. So the great one with that incredible 61-0 record. A very patient fighter, Alex, he told us yesterday. And, of course, you don't have to see him fight very often to realize that he is exactly that. Be interested to see if he, he goes out just tries to take Vice out right away and be, you know, impressive in terms of his take charge ability, or whether he does what he normally does, even, you know, with opponents of a better quality, and that is take his time, as you said. Be patient, not press when the knockout, it comes fine. Combination at that time, a left followed up by the right by Kenny Vice, who one would think needs at least a round to get <laughs> untracked. I, there is no way that he can be in the ring with Julio Cesar Chavez and not feel the, the pressure of being in the ring with a great one like that. I mean, he's never faced anyone even near Julio Cesar Chavez. There he got hit by a, a left hand by Chavez. Pretty much the end of the punch, but really the first solid punch. You can see Vice thinking to himself, how am I going to be able to take this? And he stood in there. Oh, and a good left that time by Vice. Catches Chavez. A scoring punch. Sends the three-time champion backwards. Might have noticed there right in your screen, the left of your screen, the ominous presence of the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson. There he is in the blue jumpsuit. If Julio Cesar Chavez, ooh, good left there, and a left to the body by Chavez. There's no question that, that Kenny Vice is more than a club fighter. He's ranked number nine by the IBF. This is a welterweight fight as Chavez comes in at 143 and a quarter. This is the heaviest that he has ever fought before. The body shot by Chavez and then uh, brought Vice's hands down. They came over the top of the good right hand. Vice working a combination, but Chavez blocks all of those with the gloves. Good left jab and then back into the body with the right by Chavez. Chavez talked that when I was 40 and 0, I really didn't think that much about my record. All of a sudden, I was at 50 and 0, and now 61 and 0, and now extremely important to Chavez to remain undefeated. He'd like to retire that way, but he's only 27. Jabs from 
Vice missing inside the final 10 seconds of the first round. Well, this has already gone longer than some people thought it would. And the second round has started. A welter out, a Walter Waite bout rather, scheduled for 10 rounds. Julio Cesar Chavez and Kenny Vice, both wearing the white trunks. Chavez with the red and green trim and the pace picks up early here in the second round, Alex. And Julio picked it up with some major league body punches. Body punching is really one of the things that separates the great fighters from the not so great. And Chavez is just a great body puncher, as are so many of the Mexican champions, especially with the left hook to the body. One of the things Kenny Vice has to watch out for is eating the right hand. Watching tape of this fighter, he's been susceptible to taking some pretty good shots from opponents' rights. Right. He, doesn't, he doesn't want to get too predictable with that jab. There's you Meldrick see. Taylor sitting ringside. A very interested spectator. <laughs> IBF is. junior welterweight champion. And a lot of people think the one man in the world that might have a real good shot to beat Julio Cesar Chavez. Chavez was telling us yesterday, Alex, that Don King had actually made an offer of over a million dollars to the Taylor people to have a Chavez-Taylor fight and then Taylor and his camp had turned it down. And Meldrick will tell you just the same thing from his point of view, that his people, uh, Dan Duva, offered the same kind of money to Chavez and he turned him down. So. Good work inside that time by Chavez. Kenny by staying active, he's not intimidated. He knows that, you know, as we mentioned, nobody gave him a chance at all, but uh, he came out here, he's gonna do his best. And a good left counter punch that time by Vice lands smartly on the cheek of Chavez. Julio has a history of coming down sometimes to the level of his opponent. Good. He gets up for the big challenges, but against the lesser opponent, sometimes he just doesn't get as inspired. That may be the case here in the first round. You know, it's not like he's losing the fight yet or in any danger. It's just a matter of fact, this guy, if you didn't know it was Julio Cesar Chavez in the ring and you walked in the arena, you might think that uh, the guy on the right of your screen was in the fight. He's hurting Vice with those shots to the body. Everything from Chavez appears to be in combinations, and at least one punch in the combination seems to be going to the body, and they are really landing. Kenny Vice told us yesterday in the interview, Dan, that lateral movement was the key for him. He couldn't stand there and trade, and yet here he has reverted to form and just standing there going punch for punch with Julio. It's just not a strategy that's going to do him any good at all. Again, the patience, the patience of Chavez is showing. He's not a headhunter. Patiently working the body, throwing his combinations. Not looking for the one lightning bolt that's going to end it on one punch. This is action in the second round. Inside the final 10 seconds and Kenny Bice standing in there with the champ. Julio Cesar Chavez uh, choosing not to sit between rounds, standing the entire round. Kenny Vice went to the stool and worked hard to get some oxygen back in his lungs. The body shots from Chavez, Alex, at least by my estimation, are starting to, to take a toll of Vice. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of when Julio wants to take him out, when he wants to step up the pace and get his knockout. He paced himself, body shot a little bit low there, the left by uh, Chavez. And now Chavez taking the punches a little higher. Yeah. Oh, that good right lands to the chin. I think Julio is getting hit with a little bit more than he'd like to be. Kenny is trying, he is throwing punches, he is putting punches together, and I, you know, there's a little redness on Julio's face. I'm not trying to imply that he's giving a full effort here, he's obviously pacing himself and carrying vice, but he's still getting hit with punches that uh, you don't like to see. Well, it was Vice with Chavez up against the ropes, and Chavez turns tables, but Kenny Vice battles his way off the ropes, but takes some good shots to the head. And now he's solid up. blows to the head from Chavez. He grabs the head. Chavez, like the true professional he is, drills the body. Chavez has to come down with his hands, and he goes back up to the head. And Kenny Vice looks shaky. His legs are starting to stiffen. And again, another scoring trio of punches by Chavez. And Alex Vice's gloves are coming down. The shots to the head are scoring. Ooh, a solid right. You could stop this fight any time you wanted to. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Referee hold on. Frank Cappuccino. Can you give him a standing One, count? Under two. New Jersey rules. Here comes the standing eight, which Four. is in effect for this fight. Five. Over there. 
referee puts Chavez back in the neutral Seven. corner. He wandered out. Eight. Want to continue, yeah. son? Huh? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Well, you can hear that plainly for yourself. Do you want to continue, son? I hope Frank won't let it go too much longer. But right now, Kenny Vice, and Not that's so it. Time. Frank Cappuccino waves off the fight, and wisely so. Wisely so. And a game effort by Kenny Vice, but... Again, the brilliance of Julio Cesar Chavez, easy to see. Yeah, really a glorified sparring session. I mean, Chavez just came in to, for a workout, and he got just what he wanted. He got his 62nd victory. And his 51st knockout. So Julio Cesar Chavez, the great one. Kenny Vice did really what you'd expect of him. The one thing you have to say for Kenny is he did not freeze in the presence of this greatness. You know, he didn't go in there and just get absolutely wouldn't and fall down the first time he get hit got hit he put everything he had into it he just didn't have anything near enough this is action from round three vice missing by this point kenny vice who said he wanted to move just couldn't move because the body shots in the first two rounds there's the real good chavez counter punch coming right at you with the right hand makes vice hold on now watch chavez step back get punching room for the body shots one two right above the belt then with the left again with the right drove vice off and then came up with the uppercut. Tremendous variety of punches. Kenny Vice just doesn't know where they're coming from, and that's the action that led the referee to give him a standing eight count that just delayed the inevitable ending. And Alex, you see so many times a fighter will clinch and grab, and his opponent doesn't make him pay by working to the body. You certainly can't say that about Chavez. Matter of fact, Mike Tyson, who's sitting at ringside, should do more of what Julio did right there. When Mike fights a taller opponent, a lot of times when the opponent grabs him around the neck, he just lays there, Mike.